Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm a very happy captain. And we have the wondrous task today. It's a hard job, but somebody has to do it, Lee. I'm showing you the 2016 Lost <laughs> Oh, baby, baby. So look, let's clear up something to get things going. 2015, Gibson made the bold move of heavily innovating a much loved and cherished range of, uh, cherished range even, of Gibson guitars. Always gonna be a difficult thing to do. Uh, very People very don't difficult like thing change. To do. Not only do they not like change, they dislike having choice removed. Yes. Uh, and of course in 2015, you kind of had to either like it or lump it with all the changes that Gibson had made to their, their range. So they listened, they learned, and I have to say, they have smashed it out the park with their 2016 range on every level. Because not only is the traditional spec range of Les Pauls that we've all loved for 50, 60 years, not only is that back now in all its glory, also, as a choice now, and I, you know, you have a choice, you can choose to go with, uh, in every single model of the range, a high performance version of the traditional spec. And, and I think high performance is the key. I mean, really, it is high performance. They've kind of thought of everything. They've made some improvements to the previous yeah. version of this. And a couple of things that as a player just feel, I mean, f***ing amazing. Yes. And you complete that F word out with- You complete oh, that God! And a couple of things that as a player just feel. Bleep oh that God! Up. You can take that F and you can bleep it. Yeah. You can bleep it again. <laughs> and then bleep it again. To me, that had a scream to it. Bleep oh that God! Let me just tell you, so I've got here the Les Paul Standard with the traditional spec. Now it's a teeny weeny bit confusing because there is also a Les Paul traditional with a traditional spec. But imagine the whole range from the sort of studio and upwards and imagine each of those models having a traditional spec and a, and a high performance spec. So the standard, we thought we'd start these videos with the standard as that's kind of really the, you know, that's the daddy, the guitar all others are judged by. So on the traditional spec standard, I have um, an asymmetrical neck, which means it's kind of like that sort of slightly tear shaped, so a little bit more um, rounded by the thumb, a little bit flatter by the fingers as you're holding it. A compound radius, so the, the neck gets a little flatter as we go up the fretboard. Um, locking machine heads. Which so are great. Not robot or anything. Because I got locking. one of these, and the yep. locking machine heads are great. Burst bucket pros, the same switching, uh, that was on the previous model, so we can um, tap the humbuckers to give a more sort of P90 kind of sound. We can phase reverse the neck pickup so that when I'm here, I can get that Peter Green kind of vibe. I have the blow switch, but that's kind of it. That's the point, you know. That's and and the standard has been here before. So the asymmetrical neck and the locking machine is they're not they're not completely new. If you don't like your Les Pauls messed with at all. There is the model below this one, it's just called the Les Paul Traditional, and that slightly confusingly comes in a traditional spec and a high performance spec. But if you, you, know, if you don't want an asymmetrical um, neck and a, co a contoured uh, compound radius, sorry, and locking me, you don't, I, you don't want any of that, you just go, I just want it like it was yeah. you know, back in the day, then you need the Les Paul Traditional, <clears throat> now and, I have, and we'll cover that another day. But I yeah. have first hand experience of shopping between the traditional and yeah. this. It took me hours, yeah. and for me it was really the neck shape that won over. Yeah, um, it is quite different, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, they're great guitars.
want to tell them about this one? Well, yeah, so I, and my last thing is I just have the modern weight relief. So this is the Les Paul Standard um, and comes in a ton of different colors and I'm sure that by the power of glorious editing, uh, they will be appearing on your screen now. Yeah. But, so this is back. This is back in the catalog. So everybody that kind of went, oh, I didn't really like the direction they were going to in 2015, come back. <laughs> because, you know. With, to Mordor we will take you. We have, you know, we have liftoff. Houston, no, that's the problem, isn't it? I don't even know what that, that said, but you know, here it is, we're back. But as Rob said, you've got to hear about this high performance model because they really, really have, they've really thought about how to yeah. kind of just give Houston, it a modern Houston, we tweak. don't have a problem. Yes, that's, the, that's what I was Gibson's looking for. Gibson's back and yes. it's doing great stuff and I'm really happy that they are. <laughs> First of all, talk about some of the really obvious, well, things that jumped out at me being as an obvious change. Titanium nut. Now, this was because it's a nice change. It's a much harder wearing material. It sounds yeah. incredible. And it's married up by titanium saddles. Yeah. That's a brilliant, brilliant innovation. Yeah. I'm really and, happy and, and, done and adjustable as well. So yeah, adjustable Really, height. really quickly adjust the height of your nut. If we flip it over, the G-Force is quicker and smoother. And... <laughs> Initially, it's one of those love or hate Marmite things, and you know, people will be forgiven for going, ah, it's robot tuners, I don't want that, I just want to sit here and do it myself. But once you've spent any time with these, I mean, for example, just now, Lee was like, I, I've got to tune my guitar, and I'm like, press the button, done, tuned. Thank you, G-Force. Do you want to tune to me, Lee? And he's like, yeah. What's the, it's kind of, yeah, do you know what? It, it's, it's so frustrating, really, because I'm really jealous or oh, as Rob was just saying, we were sitting here and I'm, you know, I'm kind of going, I'm not quite in tune, I'm, you know, and I'm, and it, you know, it's, it's not a complete ball ache and I know how to tune my guitar. I've been tuning it myself for 25 years, you know, so it's like, um, and I'm kind of going, I just, I just tune, I just tune, I just tune like that. And it's taking me two or three minutes or whatever. And I'm literally leaning over, I'm looking out of the corner of my eye and Rob's just going, press the button, you, you, tune. Does it? Yeah, but like, it literally is. It's just kind that. of annoying because after a while. The thing is, it's know. upgraded. It, it learns the guitar, it yeah. learns the tension of the strings, it learns all sorts of stuff. So the more you use it, yeah. the quicker it is. It really works. It absolutely works. Yeah. I used this mechanism on the recording for the Door G E P and it works straight out of the box. It's so, great. So it's kind I of like it. Yeah, I think you've got to, you know, at some point. I, I, st I still kind of go back to this idea that I'm sort of clinging, I'm like the car driver that's clinging onto my manual gearbox for no other reason other than the yeah, fact yeah, that's yeah. how I've always driven. You know the way I, it's like, I think that there's going to become a point where you just go, do you know what, every car has an automatic gearbox. I kind of kind of like came this. around full circle with this because initially when I saw G-Force, I hated it. I thought it was yeah. a horrible idea. And then I ended up thinking, but um, when you're recording, you stump on a tuning pedal mm. and then you do it yourself. What's the difference mm. between stomping on a tuning pedal and doing it yourself, yeah. or the stomp pedals here on yeah. the guitar headstock yeah. and it does it for you? I, I think the big thing that, that in that when this was first designed, everybody went, everybody skipped the really obvious function of it, i.e. just keep your guitar in tune, yeah. and went straight to the, oh look, we can do open D and open G, and the, and, and it was all a bit like, yeah, but how many no guitars really actually about do that? that? It's and just, just imagine, I mean, it can do all that, but just imagine, it's just like a built-in keep my yeah, guitar and in tune. Yeah, and you can still just button. tune your guitar like normal, so yeah, if, the, if you just want to forget, we should say, the, just the gear ratios it. are very different, so like, a turn like that on, on a G-Force system, a third of a normal tune. Is, yeah, is much less than that turn so it it's, feels a little different to, to tune but it's you can manually tune if you anyway want to. anyway <laughs> This yeah. is great. I think, in my opinion, this is the best change Gibson ever made. Because the heel joint, forgive yeah. me if I say this, I never really liked the heel joint in Les Paul. It always just got in the way a little bit. Yeah. It was always that thing that if you want it, to go up high, for me, it kind of got in the way. I mean, you can play up high. I mean, you, of hit, course you can. see people like Slash kind of doing all this sort of super fast stuff. Yeah, up Slash sort of doable, is great. I can't. I totally know what you mean. It's like... This is great. You aren't... And I'm... I, do you know, I kind of kicked myself in the way of thinking... Why wouldn't you have put that on the 2015 range? It's just they've like, really thought it, about they it. They really have. It's like it's such a brilliant idea again to separate the idea of a, of a sort of a traditional spec guitar to yeah. a to I mean, a it more looks, modern spec guitar. It looks guitar. sick. Of course, it looks so much sicker if you just 
take this off as well, that's it. Now it's naked the way nature intended. See I, that? I can't do that. The, the, <laughs> the standard in a traditional spec has no scratch plate um, and no way of easily... So see, this has the option. Or, now the next yeah. thing is, in the yeah. control, what do you call this, compartment? Cavity. Cavity, that's the thing. The film we're cavity. Gonna, we're going to give you <laughs> we're going to give you a photograph or a sweep or something. Yeah. There are one, two, three, four, five dip switches. Now this is really innovative and I can't remember them all, but they do things like giving you the option of choosing whether these are taps or splits. Yeah. That's a really cool thing. Um, doesn't it give you the option as well of doing things like changing whether it's the inside coils yes. that are coil so taps rather or the than having the, coils, yeah. the, the, the not the blow would you call it blow switch, blow switch yeah yeah but rather than that yeah, it's outside or inside coils it, when you've got it tapped yeah. it's really it's clever, got man. kind of high frequency capacitors in there it's it's just it's one of those things it's again look just you want to get in and fiddle with your guitar's electronics and change everything and that you can do it on that this one is just your standard it does what it does um, yeah. But yeah, just a ton of stuff. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can go and read out all the different kind of dip switch uh, options within there. This is not something you do on the fly, obviously. And just in case you're wondering, uh, we've taken the, the, the black cover off so that, you know, obviously your guitar will come with a cover like this. It's just we've, yeah. we've taken it off on that. <laughs> The 2015 Les Paul range had a, a three or four millimeter wider neck than the previous year, you know, like what you would be used to as a, as a Les Paul neck. And I think for most people, that took the Les Paul and just completely changed how it felt. So the 2016 high performance range, although the neck is marginally wider um, than the standard neck, it's only about one mil wider. So all it's really designed to do is just give you that little bit of extra room. Yeah, yep. it's the asymmetric, uh, what do you call it, asymmetric, asymmetric biometric, gymnastic. Biometric, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> kilometric. Kilometric. Uh, Kenny metric. It's the same uh, depth, but it's a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit wider. Yeah. Like 1.3 mil. Yeah, it's like a teeny weeny bit. It's, yeah. it's interesting because it's it doesn't sound like a lot, and it's certainly a lot less than, than the, the 2015 range, which was like three or four mil wider than a regular neck. Uh, but when we were doing that Ibanez video the other day, the only difference between a wizard and a super wizard neck is one millimeter. And, they, and, it, and you do like go, yeah, this, that, that feels pretty different. you know. For me, it was a huge difference. Yeah. I immediately felt it, and then yeah. he was like, well, it's one mil, what are you talking about? James? I know, it's crazy. But so, but, so yeah. check them out. Um, it's great. I really like it. Yeah. I really like the access. I love how much faster and smoother the tuning is. Yeah. Um, I like the nut. I think that's really cool. It I'm kind of there's, there's one thing that I'm kind of a little bit jealous really of is um, they've also decided that the high performance models are going to get the quadruple A flame tops, and the the, the standard models are going to get the triple A flame tops. So you're still going to get some really pretty guitars like this one, but if you want the absurdly pretty, then obviously you get you know, kind of like a crazier course. flame on high um, performance. Just a quick chat about what we're going oh, into. Oh, in a different case. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's a sick case. Yeah. Well, again, that's something, I love the fact that people have the choice. If you buy this guitar, uh, you will get the brown leather shaped case that, you know, that, that everybody knows and loves comes with a Gibson. Yeah, but this gets a proper. sick case. Yeah, you get like a titanium rectangular. It looks like one of those old American, um, the air, winner, not Winnebago, uh, what's it called, air things streamer? Things pull behind your car. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like one of those, it's sick. Did we describe what that was? Do you know what we mean? Kind of like the, the what, what is it? it's called an airstreamer, isn't it? Or something caravan, like that. Caravan, but you Yeah, in you. England it's we would call it a caravan. A caravan in England, but like but a cross between a caravan and a torpedo. Yeah. They look like one of those. They look really cool. Yeah, it looks cool. I'm going into a JCM 800, and in the effects loop, I'm using the amplifier from Atomic, uh, just for reverb and delay. Yeah. And on the floor, I've got the EP booster, and I've just literally got myself slightly a clean tone from a JCM 800 yeah. to give you some really simple tonages so that you can hear the tonages. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
difference there? Yeah. <laughs> That's just which coils you're Yeah, so I've got them both it? split and I'm changing, so I'll play a little bit of rhythm with it down and then I'll yeah. bring it up for you. Oh, he's going for it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what, as well? All of the yes. I've got to say as well, um, one of the things that I did think Gibson got absolutely right in 2015 was they had a big overhaul and a big investment in final quality control out of the factory. So they bought a ton of new Plex machines, uh, really, really <coughs> up the quality. And I have to be honest with you, that, that whilst I accept all the, the stuff that happened during 2015, the, the products weren't, the, the spec wasn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea. Um, the one thing I would defend Gibson to the hilt on was that they got the finishing and the general setup and the fretwork and everything on the Les Pauls or the whole range was spectacularly good. Now I've, I've never, I've always really felt that, that, that you know, you could look at PRS, like a PRS USA Custom, and sort of go, it is on the whole a higher quality finish than a Les Paul. And that was up until the 2015 range where I really thought that Gibson pulled it out the bag and, and are now very much on par. And, and I, I can absolutely say that, you know, for 2016, Gibson are continuing that. So all the kind of stuff that, you know, maybe on previous models, you had to accept that there might be a little bit of orange peeling on, on the effect, uh, on the finish, sorry, or, orange peelings where you see that very, very slight sort of dimpling of the finish where it's perhaps not been buffed to the highest standard. You know, where perhaps some of the binding or some of the fretwork left a little bit to be desired in terms of the final detail. You cannot say that on, on the 2015. No, they're really good. Details. They've just really nailed it. And, and, um, they took a ton of heat in 2015 over some of the price rises that came through. So the guitars have gone down. So the, the 2016 range is cheaper now than the 2015 range was when it launched. So it's like, there's really, you know, fair play for, for all the heat that they took. I know you guys gave them a really hard time on, or some of you guys gave them a hard time in 2015. They totally listened. They totally tried to do, you know, address everything that everybody said. They didn't want to stop innovating because Gibson is all about innovation, but they absolutely accepted there has to be choice and there has to be value. Yeah. Um, and they did a great job. I love it, you know. I mean, and we're gonna do the whole range. You know, it's probably gonna take us a month or two to get through them all. But you know, but we'll do the classics and we'll do the studios and we'll do the traditionals and stuff like that. We're gonna do SGs after this video. But the, we thought we'd start with the standard because it's kind of like, you know, that's the that's the aspirational guitar, isn't it? Everybody dreams of one day owning a Les yeah, Paul standard. Yeah, gotta have the, um, uh, the holy trinity. So. Three Les Pauls. I <laughs> I guess I shouldn't, I haven't really shown you tonally speaking. I'll just very, very quickly, you know, we had a little listen to some of Rob's tones. So I can tap 
the pickups. Now, tapping them essentially reduces the number of coils used on, on the humbucker, so we'll give him more of a P90 kind of sound. <laughs> Uh, if I use both pickups together, uh, one of the, uh, the the pull out on the the, the the tone control will give me the phase reverse on the neck pickup. So that's my Peter Green kind of effect. Gives that more quacky kind that's of ducky kind of quack sound. sound. Yeah, it's like. Nobody in the, when that very, very, very first came out, nobody could work out, you know, why Peter Green sounded so totally different to everybody else. But uh, urban myth is it was a mistake, wasn't it? So. thing I can do on here is my blow switch. Now this is like kind of a cool feature. So if I, if I engage a bit of distortion, but keep the, the volumes kind of relatively low. If I just want to go crazy full maximum bridge pickup, nothing in the way without adjusting anything, I just pull out this back pickup, this back control, sorry. Right. So, really cool, you know, really cool kind of feature. Um, man. That's about it really, isn't it? How much uh, is that now then? It's like 2,100 pounds. And like, you know, last year I think it was 2,300 when they launched it like that. And I think that is about 20, 2,300 as well. So again, again, things will vary depending on finishes and stuff like that. So I'll put a link in the description below to take you to the whole 2016 range. Um, the the studio versions and, and they've reintroduced some of the worn finishes, you know, where they don't lacquer them So that drops the price a bit more. Uh, so I think the 2016 range is starting from about 600 pounds uh, So very very affordable um, But you know and and different guitars at different prices all the way through to about two and a half thousand pounds. So it's just They've done well. They've, They've done, done really a great well. Great job. I guess it's time for us to grab some SGs and do I another video. I guess it's then. time to grab some SGs. Have you heard <laughs> enough playing? I think the university said yes. They shut the yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Please, oh, uh, God! Get on Stop with making it. long videos. <laughs> we can't watch all your long videos. Uh, well, thank you for watching this, um, and thank you, Gibson, for for just you know for being good. I, I was, I was late, to the, I was late to the Gibson party, wasn't I? I only got my Les Paul last year. I yeah. would say it's like it's. Oh, well, me too. Best guitar, it's best guitar I own. I love it. I love it. Do you hear that? It's the best guitar he's got. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Ah, oh, do you know what? No, I, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not retracting that because I, I, I am retracting. It's the most expensive. I do guitar not guitar. use the word best in the sense of. I should not have used the word best. I don't believe in best when it comes to guitars. I only believe oh, in I what do. you like and what you don't like. So it's my favourite guitar. Uh, I should. Go. I should change that to it's my favourite. Well, guitar. in that case, I've been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. Bye. Oh, I hit your, I hit your last pull. No, <laughs> I did. <laughs>